you, Rhonda. Today, the Weekend Gardener looks at a plant you may not have heard of, but maybe you have. Of course, you should definitely consider it for your garden. Hello, gardening friends. Welcome to the Weekend Gardener. You know, when we go out into the garden, we see tomatoes and beets and all kinds of different things, really, eggplant, you know, all those guys. But um, I want to show you something uh, unique that we grow out here, and uh, this is amaranth. It has a, a funny name, kind of, but it means the one that will not wither. Boy, what a great plant for dry areas. And a heavy producer of seeds. Look at the seeds. They're very colorful. Look at this guy right here. What a beautiful seed head. And it'll get a lot bigger than that, too. They're just starting. Here's another one up here, just starting to produce seeds, flowers, and then it'll turn to seeds. And um, they're more nutritious than wheat. It's a very interesting plant. You know, it's kind of related to uh, pigweed. Not kind of, it really is related to pigweed. And there's many other ornamental plants, too, like coxcomb and some of those others. So uh, that's the family. And so, um, you know, when people are out in the country, the survivor types, um, they'll eat the leaves of the pigweed. It can be prepared like uh, spinach. So um, that's a real nice one. People out on hikes want to cook some food. So uh, that's one. You know, one of the problems, uh, considering uh, the fact that uh, you can grow it at home too, might be for some folks that it will tie up calcium and zinc. But it provides a lot of other minerals and nutrients, and um, it's a beautiful plant. So uh, purple, red, gold flowers are, are common with this guy, and um, it's a beauty and it really is drought tolerant. If we're looking for that kind of plant, then drought tolerant is it. The pigweed on the farms, though, has become a problem because they're resistant to the herbicides over the years. So, um, and it's another good thing about it, it's a trap plant. See these holes? It'll keep insects coming to it instead of nearby plants in the garden. So that's amaranth. It's something to consider growing next year. Um, as water gets more limited, it's a very good plant. Let's go take a look at one of the really sweet herbs that we grow. So this is the other one I wanted to show you right here. This is a really neat plant, and it's called stevia. And um, it's from Central America, and even in West Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona, there's a few varieties of these. But um, this is a super sweet plant. It's about 30 to 45 times more sweet than sugar. And so, uh, and low glucose, even diabetics could use this one. It's really a digestible little plant. You know, in Japan, about the 1970s, they began to use it as a product. And so they began to take care of it and use it as a sweetener. You know, it, with that intensity of being 30 to 45 times more uh, powerful, sweeter than sugar, then um, you don't need very much. And it is really, really sweet. And so uh, between it growing here and in Central and South America, we have it available in large quantities. And in Japan, they're producing it. And now it's being produced all over the world. It's easy to grow. Put one out in your herb garden. Look at this guy. Just so beautiful. And so um, stevia is one to think about. You'll use it in your teas. You'll find a lot of uses for this plant. A little unusual, but you'll find it at independent nurseries everywhere. It's really sweet. For The Weekend Gardener, I'm John Dromgoul. I'll see you next week. Well, for more of John, don't forget to listen to his gardening show on KLBJ 590 AM.